I Rock Radio, the world headquarters of rock. It is Mike Crowley here in Studio 3C of I Rock Radio with our friend Mike Mushak. How are you, man? Good. What's happening? It's good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. So, I just saw you a couple of days ago yes. at the Aaron Lewis and Friends show up yep. in uh, Massachusetts. So, I want to talk about that show. And I'll tell you first, just starting off, as a as a fan of the band, Stained, watching you guys play together again was awesome. Oh, it thank was, you. It was it fun. Was a cool moment to see and just hear that music again with you guys playing it. was That was pretty cool. But before we get into that, how did it come about? I know you've done that show before, but right. how did this year come about? You know what? Aaron just uh, sent me an email. Said, hey, you want to do the... Uh, actually, no. Aaron didn't. Uh, Pete, who works, who worked for St. Trevor, now works with me. Uh, he just said, hey, you know, Aaron wants to know if you want to do, you know, the show. And listen, of course, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As I said to him, I said, listen, whatever you need, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, uh, it was fun to do it. And I, I had told him, because we've been doing those virtual reality kind of like session things with guys from different bands and trying to do that. So I mentioned trying to do something like that. And, you know, they like the idea. And that's something I guess they do, like they call it a guitar pull where a bunch of everybody just gets on stage and calls out songs and everybody just kind of plays it, you know, mm-hmm. and you just all play along. So that's what it ended up being. And uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was yeah. A, it was a cool night for a lot of different reasons, for the for the charity aspect of right. it. But but also just all these different musicians coming together to play. Corey Taylor was there, yeah. and Sully Erna, and it just made for a very special night. So One of a kind. Yeah, really Something is. that you're not going to get anywhere else or mm-hmm. see anywhere else or see again. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, if you're there and who knows who's yeah, available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you've even done your show last fall. Right. Down at Foxwoods, the right. All-Star Acoustic Jam where you had Sean Morgan and everybody come together. And, right. You know, that's another show that yeah. it's just a one of a kind, unique opportunity. We might do that one again. That so, was fun. All right. Tell me about that a little bit. So. Are there definitive plans or tentative plans? We're trying to, to we're trying to make it happen again. I mean, and it basically boils down to, like you said, scheduling. You know, so I think right now, um, you know, we did that in November of last year. I think we, we're looking at trying to do it uh, the beginning of next year. You know, when people are, you know, maybe have some time off. So now, do you have specific people in mind? Do you want to? Do I want to do the same. I kind of, I kind of want to do the same thing. Yeah, because I it thought worked. that was it worked. It was it was cool. You know, Sean and Adam together really complement each other, I think, really well. Um, you know, so I kind of went to that first, even though I have other ideas and other plans to do with other people. But I enjoyed that one. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a you great know? show to attend as well, similar to the Aaron Lewis show where you just it was a bunch of different songs. You didn't know what song was going to come next. When you go see a band, per se, do their show you kind of know sure there's certain songs they're going to do and all that but with the aaron lewis show and with your show you just don't know what's coming up even the musicians sometimes it seems no like we didn't know didn't no know we didn't know at happen, all right yeah no in fact uh there was a few songs that you know and that that was kind of the the thing that i think kind of made that cool you know what i mean that yeah. you don't you know what i mean um when aaron started playing four non-blondes <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. You know what I mean? So as a musician, how do you play along with something that maybe you've either never played or haven't played in a never long time? Played. So what do you do? Just watch what he's doing and follow <laughs> along. Try to add a little bit to it and maybe come up with something along the way. You know what I mean? But see, that's what makes for those special moments. The audience is singing along and you guys are having fun. And even when you did Hunger Strike, you know, because at the end, that song just keeps repeating. It does. I'll tell you exactly what happened because we've, we've played that one a few times. And I do know is that there's a, after the first chorus, it, it kind of does a chorus again and then does the last verse. And I... Uh, we went into the second verse there and I'm like, we should probably just stop it after this because that's how it does. <laughs> but you can't communicate. We'd never played it all together like that. Right. You know what I mean? So kind of at the end, it was just like, okay, let's just end it. Cause yeah. <laughs> you know, I think Sully even said something like we could keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, more, and then yeah, exactly. It out. Exactly. Well, that was cool. So, yeah. all right. So now you had Sully Erna out there and Corey Taylor did his thing and, and you, you were out there for a bunch of that, you know, performance with Sully and stuff. And, then at the end of the night, it's the band Stained coming out to close the night. So I was backstage. Now, I didn't know that Johnny April, for example, was even going to be there. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I saw, you know, I saw him backstage, and then I'm starting to, you know, right. I'm smart. I yeah. start to put it together. Nothing gets past you, dude. <laughs> I'm like, well, let's see. Johnny's here, and Mike's here, and Aaron's here. And I saw Sal back there. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> so, but it all came together. Now, 
What was the plan? Was that that must have been the plan going into the was, show yeah. that you guys were going to? The idea the from night. the beginning was Aaron said, "Look, let's try and do a few say stain songs at the end of the night." Mm-hmm. So yeah, and so when was the last time that that group that you four of you had played live together, acoustic or otherwise? Uh, 2014. So it's been so yeah, it's been a while. I hate to say it, about but three, it has- about three years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did it feel for you? That was great. You know, yeah. Were you nervous leading up to it? I no. mean, I know you played the song. I was, a million I times. was more nervous about the other thing playing. You know, give me shelter by the Rolling Stones that I had never. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Then going up and playing. It's been a while. To, you know, I played for you know whatever fifteen years or whatever right. it is. You know, um, and it was funny because we did have a little rehearsal the night before, and, and Aaron came in, and I think we ran each song once. I'm like, okay, that's good. We got you it. Know? Yeah, we got it. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, um, and how did you decide on the three songs that you did? I mean, they're we, obviously huge hits, but is well, that's why? Right. We, well, Aaron, we, Aaron and I did have a little conversation. It's like, look, we could do some different B-side stuff. I always like doing something to remind you, and I knew he had been doing it kind of as a tribute to Chester. So I said, you know, I really want to do that. And Aaron said, well, why don't we have, because it used to be just myself and Aaron playing it. Yep. He said, why don't we have Johnny and Sal play along also? So it's just a little different version, you know, because there aren't drums on it on the record or bass. Um so yeah, we ran that once the day before. We're like, okay, that's that's good, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we just, you know, chose. It's been a while on outside. Well, makes sense. Yeah, you know, you know. And as I said in the beginning, from a fan's perspective, standing there just hearing you guys play those songs again, I got goosebumps, man. Oh, I really cool. did, and it was. To me, it was a special moment. Sure. And cool. So thank you for doing that. Oh, listen, I was, I was, I was really glad we could. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was. Uh, the whole night ended up just being a lot of fun. I mean, it was it was weird because, and the reason I didn't get to talk to you that night was because what we were doing that night literally was changing constantly as to what it was. Mm-hmm. And at one point it was that, you know, Corey was going to be up there with us and he was going to, and he had four songs. I had no idea what they were playing. Mm-hmm. And so then we get the list of what they're playing, but it was like at four thirty in the afternoon, we're so squat at eight <laughs> and I'm like, some of these songs I've never even heard. I should probably go listen to them. Yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? Have here. an idea. So I was scrambling with Corey Lowry, who was playing bass. Yep. Um, and plays with Santa Sonia. And so we were listening. We spent about an hour and a half going through these other songs. And that's why. And then my family showed up. And then the next thing I know, it's like, it's almost time to go on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I saw you set up the camera waiting for me. And I'm like, just ah, you guys didn't say a word. And I'm like, All right, this is awkward, but I still have. To. And it was the first show I think I've played without a guitar tech since 95. Really? Yeah. So, I wow. mean, I was pretty much taking care of myself, too, mm-hmm. which is fine. It's mm-hmm. all good. But, uh, but just another it's thing just different. you would normally have to deal with. Right. Like I walked off stage and I got back there. I'm like, oh, cool. This is I'm like, oh, wait. I have a half dozen guitars up there. Nobody knows what cases they go in and they're right. sitting on the stage. I'll be right back. I got to go load up mm-hmm. my stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and I got to get into my truck. Mm. So, uh, but anyways, it was good. Well, you know, when you guys do this, you, you know, Stained gets together and does these three songs to close the night, the fans are going to start, oh, maybe they'll tour again. Maybe, yeah, me too. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, it has to, it lends itself to the question. Right. Was there a conversation with you, Aaron, Johnny, everybody about future stain plans? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it. We've been talking about it. You know what I mean? So it's just that just timing needs to be right for it to happen. You know, when it happens. Yep. And I'm assuming it will eventually one day happen. Mm-hmm. Will it be a full on tour like new album tour? That's everything? see, that's the biggest question. I mean, you know, and like that's the thing. There's there's definitely different hurdles and things that we need to figure out to get to that point. You know. Um, I definitely like to do new music. Mm-hmm. We'll, we we don't have a record label. Um, do so you it need doesn't, one? No, I don't think you do. Um, it could help in certain things, but I mean, I think now there's so many people that, you know, because the record industry became what it was, there's so many good people that lost their jobs that are out there doing independent, you know, things sure. that you need that you can hire to yeah. do it, you know. Um, and with good management, I mean, I think you don't necessarily do need one. Um, and I don't think it's necessary for us to do... 10 song record, you know, um, that seems to be the, what I think may be the trend of the future, not EPs per se, but just putting out a handful of songs as sure. opposed to a full on collection. It's just so much work to get a, a you know, a good record done. Yeah. You know? And they don't, um, they don't sell like they once did. So sell it all. why are you going to invest the money, the studio time and all that to record 12 songs 
and and not get a return. Get the more on your ba- same bang for the buck if you put out one or three or yeah, whatever it is. Right. You know what it's I mean? Off that. As long as it's great, right? You know what I mean? That's you know. So, um, so I don't know. Those th- these things need to kind of be figured out, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it happens sooner than later. Mm-hmm. You know. Let me ask you about Saint Sonia. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like as a radio guy and as a fan that it's getting close to the time where you should have new music out. Yeah, for sure. What is the plan for St. Sonia? We've right been now? recording and demoing songs and, and getting stuff ready. I mean, look at the thing that's kind of come up is, you know, um, Adam's about to be a father. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why he didn't make it mm-hmm. on Friday. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we kind of need a little bit of time for that, you know, which is and I get it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I get Sun's it. sitting right, right over there. Sitting, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? And honestly, it's been great because, you know, I, I think it was funny. I, I helped manage his, his baseball team or coach his baseball team. And last year, the, it's, he had the same manager and I was gone the entire summer. Mm-hmm. You know, we were on that Disturbed, which is great, you yeah. know, and it's good to work. But uh, I missed a lot of stuff. And for this year to be able to be home, be able to help out coach and go to all the games. And like I said, he made the all-star team. He I wouldn't, he probably wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't here because mm-hmm. it was literally practice every day and days that were practice or games. Right. And I get to go to all of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what so, life's about, man. You got to work, obviously, you, but you have time. to try and balance it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There has to be a balance. And that's why, you know, you asked that question, will it be a full record and a full tour? You know, the last tour that Stain did, it was, it was the way that Aaron does it in country, the way he does his country tours, which is, you know, like a Wednesday to Sunday and you play maybe three shows right. and you come home for a few days, yep. you know? Um, and listen, it's probably not the most economical way to tour, <laughs> but it gives you some sanity and it allows you to actually still still be there and still be part of a family. And, right. you know, because it's, it's hard enough, you know, maintaining that anyways, mm-hmm. never mind if you're, you're gone for weeks on end, you know. You've got to feel good about creating something with Aaron and, and Johnny and over the years that means so much to people that they want you to come back. That's got to yeah, feel. No. That's yeah. got to feel good. Yeah, knowing that you've got all these fans out there that are just waiting for that day. You know, that's- I hope so. I mean, listen, I you know, hopefully we uh, we find out at some point <laughs> if they're still there. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, they will be. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. You got a um, taste of it on on Friday night at the Aaron Lewis show. Those people were thrilled when you guys came. That was out. our backyard, though. You know what I mean? These people still. have been seeing us since '95. You know. <laughs> For them, <laughs> <laughs> now nah, it was a special night, and I and I look forward to to your show. Hopefully, uh, that comes around sooner than later when you do your acoustic yeah, all star jam. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. I think that, like I said, we're definitely there was uh, there was talk of that again the other day, and we're continuing trying to uh, find the right date. And I'll be I'll be back here to bug you to help promote it with, yeah. with pleasure. Oh, right. I, I definitely want to try and make that happen because it was uh, it's a great cause and. It was a lot of fun. I, like you said, I don't think anybody knew what that was going to be going into that show. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to promote it when nobody's seen it, you know, and nobody has right. any idea what it is. But now you have last year to use right. for, yeah. And all these people, now and the response thing. for it was great, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that helps build what it is. All right. So just to focus in on Saint Sonia, new album by the end of the year? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, we're, you know has a baby needs some time and we have a lot of songs done but they're not we haven't actually officially started recording we, okay. we chose a producer uh, we're using a gentleman uh, Brian Sperber who actually was the engineer on chapter 5 for Stained hmm. and uh, I, you know I've worked with him on a few other things and just a talented guy mm-hmm. you know so um, so we've been working with him and right. uh, yeah hopefully soon it'll be done Time will tell. Yeah. No, we're getting there. <laughs> Some good songs. I'm pretty stoked on it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming in. You know, always. I mean, I blew you off on Friday. At least yeah, I can do is drive down the street and come and see you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You come by anytime. <laughs> right on. And we'll go play baseball or something. There right? you go. Right? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mushock right here in Studio 3C at iRock Radio.